Welcome back. You're probably wondering where I've been gone for so long. You haven't got a notice for a new video for quite a while. Uh, part of the reason it's just been a nice summer, unusual summer. Uh, today is the 24th of July, 1950, or 19, uh, 2015, and today marks like the 53rd day without rain here in the Seattle area, or at least in my area. Uh, it sprinkled a little bit earlier today because you can notice it's overcast a little bit. Pull my cap up a little bit here. Uh, but no measurable rain in 53 days. The last uh, day it rained was June 1st and I was on my motorcycle and uh, drenched in the rain. But the other pro thing was, was I uh, just finished putting a, a fresh coat of paint all over the barn, soffits everywhere. That took me several days. and. Um, I got a couple projects. Uh, one, I've got to take the nymph back in and redo the uh, the seat to the floor pyramid, the seat pyramid to the floor. Uh, when I was uh, taking it off the barn to get it moved, all the boats away from the barn to paint, um, I dropped it too hard on the uh, the wheel uh, that goes into the. Remember, we made that uh, um, opening for the uh, the wheel. Uh, plug to go into the boat by the seat and I dropped it down and I cracked it. Uh, I dropped it way too hard. Uh, so I'm going to go back in and clean out around that uh, that fillet around that area and I'm going to glass tape it and I would recommend that if you're doing that uh, glass tape the, this, the pyramid seats to the, the, the base. Uh, the uh, fillets will hold unless you, <laughs> you abuse the boat and then they'll crack a little bit so we'll get that. But there was something else I wanted to um, show you on my uh, trailer, uh, on trucks, for cleaning the pins. It was something I found, discovered one day, uh, just by accident. Uh, and let me go, go up, set up behind the truck and the trailer, and we'll show you what, uh, what I'm talking about. Well, I'll be out of the picture here. You don't need to see me anymore. Uh, what I did when I got my little Tacoma was I ordered a Kurt hitch and then the wiring harness and then uh, if you're familiar with the Toyotas uh, you, when you get the uh, uh, wiring harness you have uh, uh, a little module that goes into the lighting box to um, separate out the brakes and all that stuff into, into four pins well I was having problems with the uh, trailer and I got this little handy dandy, um, I don't know, let me zoom in here, handy dandy little tester, and it would always show up correct. You know, I'd get all the correct lights, but when I'd plug in the trailer into the, uh, the other half of it, uh, I wouldn't, uh, sometimes it worked, sometimes it wouldn't. Uh, and I couldn't figure out what it was. Uh, uh, I called the Kurt people and they sent me a replacement and I put it in and it seemed to work for a little bit, but then it didn't. Um, and then I made a discovery one day. Uh, let me just go, let's go over to the trailer. I keep a uh, little bag and a, something to absorb moisture around the plug. I discovered that the uh, because Easy Loader uses a West Bar brand plug, and the ones I was using on the uh, truck were made by Kurt. Uh, they seem to be fine, uh, but the uh, plug around the neutral was loose and so I found that if I took my my channel locks here I could roll it around I'll use this old handle here you can see it's got a, a seam down the side I could roll it around and just gently and I could squeeze it back down to where it was tighter you can see it's Give me about half the diameter that it had been. But you got to be careful that you don't screw it up. And then I, I had another concern. It was, okay, how do I clean inside there? I mean, you can take a brush and clean the outsides. These things, you got to be careful because they're, um, uh, they have an anodizing um, electroplated to the outside to keep them from tarnishing. And I'm noticing here I'm starting to get a little bit of tarnish. I've got to uh, clean them up a little bit again. But I found something that... Uh, let's go back over to the truck. 
and I'll show you what I discovered. After I got this tightened up, then it was a clean fix after I applied my tool to it. I discovered that on with the pins sticking out, I could get this brush and clean them up. And it's a, a heavy nylon bristle, a little stiffer than a toothbrush, but it cleans them, cleans them right up. And same with the, the little pin that sticks out here. But I couldn't figure out what the heck to do inside. Let me zoom in here again. Okay. So I, I knew that I had I'd made up some test leads in order to do uh, you know electrical tests with these things, so they could put these pins in here and then put my meter on the other end. I made up a couple of them so I could do some testing. And I remembered when I got the uh, package of these pins, they were 0.176 inches for these pins. So one day I was having, I was walking along thinking, well, okay, I'm always doing something over at my Do It Best store. It's a great big, huge store, and, and they've got just about everything. Nobody's got more nuts and bolts than what they have. And I was standing in front of a case one day of... Um, I was standing in front of a, a case one day that contained uh, gun you know, parts. I mean, not parts, but uh, ammunition and cleaning supplies and targets and those kind of things. And I saw something. It was these little, you know, you've seen these guys, wire brushes. And I was looking at them and I think, I know what I can do is clean those things. 17 caliber, 17 caliber. Hornady lists it uh, in the bullets as 0.172. And we know that this electrical fitting here is a 0.76. And if you look it up on Wikipedia or whatever, the muzzle diameter of a 17 caliber is like 0 0.179, I believe it is, 178, 179. And so this little guy, Let's go back down here again. This little guy is the perfect size. Just stick it in and twist. And then twist it as you push it in, twist it as you pull it out. That way you don't expand the hole any. Perfect. Always clean, always there. And then I, you know, kept the little tube that it came in, so I can always clean that. Let me go back out and go to the trailer. I'm going to use this on it too. It's looking a little grody looking. Let me take our nylon brush here. Yeah, you can visibly see a difference in the pins. You're cleaning them up, but you're not uh, you're not wearing away with these nylon bristles. The uh, anything bad, and then you can take your little ah, get out there. Take your little uh, 17 caliber brush. And go in and clean it out. Just don't overdo it. There, nice nice and clean again. If it's really grody, you might use some contact cleaner, spray it with some contact cleaner, and then clean her out. There you go. And as a little side note, after doing our, uh, our little test here with the 17 caliber, remember 17 caliber cleaning brush for your four pin uh, trailer hitches. Now, I, had, I was talking to a friend of mine who uh, was a long-haul trucker, and he discovered one day when he was cleaning his pins uh, that uh, he had a 22 caliber. So those larger truck, big rig plugs, uh, 22 caliber, 22 caliber, cal caliber, <laughs> we'll clean those. I can say that if I do it enough times. I was out uh, last month. Finally took the, the uh, Granville Bay out sailing. Uh, it's like whenever I get someplace, I've either forgotten the part or it wasn't windy or the wind died as I got there. 
So, but this time I had a great experience. I was up on Lake uh, Ketchlis, up on the Squalamie summit all day long, uh, 10 mile an hour winds uh, consistently, and uh, the Granville Bay really scooted along. Uh, because of the shape on the bottom, uh, it's um, not quite tender, but it's, you know, you, you're careful. You don't stand up and walk around in, in, in the hull. Uh, but when you're sitting down sailing, this thing gets up and flies. So, I'm back in the barn again. Uh, you'll remember we made those, uh, those last set of oar blades and uh, the handles. And then I was down, I had jury duty on um, Monday, Tuesday. And then after t we got relieved or sent home on Tuesday, uh, I stopped down at my metal supermarket and picked up two... Uh, uh, four foot sections of uh, 065 wall, uh, inch and a half diameter uh, aluminum tubing. So uh, the next thing we're going to come back and do is we're going to go ahead and finish those shorter oars. These will be about six feet one inches because I, if you remember the nymph uh, in the water uh, video, I was having problems with those oars that I had way too long for that small hull. So these oars will be for that narrower uh, boat with the higher seat in the center. So. Uh, when I get those done, then we'll go out and then get the seat uh, retaped to the to the hull. Then we'll go out and do it, shoot another video on the nymph out in the water. And uh, what else did I have coming? I also made a change on the one of the wheels for the um, you know, the dagger board uh, carrier. I uh, converted one of them over to using the, the grudgeons and pintles. I made some uh, 90 degree hooks, you know, you know here we go, that on, a, uh, on a board and added the wheels to this so I can set them into the, uh, the grudgeons on the end of my smaller boats and then just lift up the bow and get it down to the water. Makes it really easy to get it down out of the back of the truck without grinding the transom edge uh, into gravel or asphalt or whatever you've got. So it's a little harder to carry, but uh, uh, it's easier on the hull. So until the next time, we'll see you again. Patience, and I'm glad you're still sticking with me.